Good morning, grade sixes, and welcome to another beautiful day in sunny South Africa. Yes, today is Earth Day. Before I start with my lesson and discussing Earth Day with you, I'd like to share this little quote that I received from one of my colleagues um, that posted something about COVID courage. Um, and she posts something every day and I, I just love reading her inspirational words. So um, let's go and take a look at what she said. Okay, so I just want to read it to you. Just give me a sec here. So COVID courage for today. I can choose my way of looking. I can look down or I can look up. I can see nothing or I can see more. I can glance back or I can focus forward. I can look inward to share outwards. I can see a future and a hope. Very inspirational words and um, something I think you all need to be focusing on as we go um, into Earth Day today and remember what an important day it is for us all. So let's get started. So here's our Earth Day 2020 report. Um, we've got less industrial pollution. We've got less air pollution from cars, less noise pollution and air pollution at airports and lots of less litter on the street. And all it took was a global pandemic shutdown. Earth is healing during the shutdown. Earth is taking time to recuperate and find itself again. Um, I've mentioned before, um, the bird life is beautiful. The um, animals are reclaiming land. They're coming out of their little hidey holes out of the mountains and, and they're being spotted by cameras showing the most amazing footage. Um, there's an amazing website where you can go into the Kruger National Park and actually watch the animals and the footage. And because there are no visitors and it's quiet, they are able to just be themselves in their natural habitat. So great success, something to think about on this Earth Day today. So um, just a bit of history, Earth Day is celebrated every year on the 22nd of April. Um, more than 170 countries will host rallies, outdoor events and conferences to get this green message out. Unfortunately, most of it this year is all virtual. So they're still doing virtual rallies and uh, virtual runs to get the, the green message out. It started in 1970 following the devastating 1969 oil spill in California. That's how Earth Day originated. It was hoped that, that the day would inspire people to learn more about the environment. And in 1970, Earth Day was limited to the USA, but a team of dedicated people were, were able to inspire around 20 million people to get involved. And that is why we have Earth Day today. So take some time today to just think about Earth Day, find a quiet space all by yourself and be thankful for the very many blessings we have. Today's lesson is on um, wetlands. I am Mrs. Hall and I hope you enjoy this lesson. And funny enough, it's about conservation as well, which also deals with Earth Day. So sit back, relax and enjoy. So we're going to look at the importance of wetlands today, the impact of the loss of wetlands, wetlands and biodiversity, wetlands and water quality. So grade sixes, I want you just to take a, a, a look over here and um, enjoy um, the, the beauty that nature has to offer us. Isn't our earth just amazing and beautiful? So what are wetlands? It's an area covered by shallow water for most of the year. It contains hydric soil, that is soil that is saturated by water. 
The soil lacks oxygen when saturated, and we all know what happens when you take oxygen away. It is land that is seasonally wet, so dependent on rainfall. And it is a habitat for many aquatic and terrestrial species. Aquatic being water and terrestrial being land. And some of these animals are only found in actual wetlands. And that's why it's so important that we look after them. Wetland plants are known as hydrophytes. Hydro meaning water. Formation of wetlands, obviously driven by location. It is sediments um, that is deposited along rivers. Um, it's also deposited at the mouth of rivers and also the sediment fills in aging lakes. Artificial wetlands from oil sands. Um, so there's been an effort to reclaim wetlands destroyed by mining for oil. So um, the mining companies are trying to um, come back and um, salvage a lot of uh, bad um, deeds that were done through mining and they are trying to reclaim wetlands. So we get different types of wetlands, grade sixes. Um, the three major types of wetlands in South Africa, we speak about marshes or flays or swamps. So a marsh, if you look over here, is a wetland that is dominated by herbaceous, so more green plants than woody plant species. Marshes can often be found at the edge of lakes and streams where they fo form a transition between the aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. So there's a transition from the water to the land ecosystems. They are often dominated by grasses, rushes or reeds. So more herbaceous, far more green a marsh. Marsh plants include cattails, rushes, burrweed and water lilies and the marsh animals can be very diverse as well and there's an example of a green heron. Heron, sorry. Swamps. A swamp is a wetland that is dominated by more woody plants. So you can see here Less greenery, greenery, more wood. Okay, so there's more shrubs and trees. Swamps are often near rivers or streams. And these rivers and streams sometimes flood. And the water from the floods carry the nutrients into the swamps. Mangrove swamps are rich habitats full of animals. Like the snowy egret, the white ibis, the brown pelican, Cuckoos, herons, monkeys, turtles, lizards, mudskippers, red-tailed hawks, eagles, and sea turtles, alligators, and crocodiles. So very diverse animal life found in swamps all over the world. Just a few examples. Right, a flay. Um, common word in South Africa is a shallow minor lake, okay, and mostly of a seasonal or intermittent, intermittent nature. It might refer to seasonal ponds or marshy patches where frogs and similar marsh dwellers breed. Commonly, flays vary in their extent or even in their presence or absence of water, according to the fall of rain or dryness of the season. Okay, so when you have heavy rainfall periods, the flays will obviously be a lot more fuller. What are the functions of wetlands? Well, first of all, it improves the water quality. It reduces flood and storm damage. It regulates water levels in watersheds and it provides wildlife habitats. Wetlands protect terrestrial areas, adjoining them from storms, floods, and tidal damage. And plants in wetlands help to filter the pollutants in the water. So it acts kind of like a filtration system. We did speak about filtration in our physical uh, methods of separation, and you learned about it in one of your last lessons, and wetlands do exactly the same. They filter out the pollutants in the water so they get rid of all the insoluble substances and prevent it from going into the water to keep it healthy. 
What do wetlands provide? They support more wildlife and plants than any other kind of habitat. They provide nesting and feeding grounds for both residents, birds that live there, and migratory birds, birds that come in from other areas, including game bird, waterfowl, and songbirds. The biodiversity of wetlands. Wetlands serve as a home for many plants and animals, ranging from invertebrates, those are animals without a backbone, to fishes, to birds, to the endangered species, such as the great hornbill and even the wandering shrew. It provides uh, animals with a variety of food as well as shelter to hide from their predators. Many plants and animals have adjusted themselves into this very wet environment. What is happening to our wetlands? While well, some wetlands continue to exist, but are destroyed by the effects of fertilizers, runoff from farming and agriculture, pesticides, and even oil runoff. How are our wetlands being distracted? Well, intrusion of non-native species, in other words, species that are not indigenous to the area, draining of wetlands for agricultural purposes, okay, to grow more crops, and for mosquito control. So mosquitoes can carry pesky little diseases, um, so they try and control them by draining the wetlands, taking away the water, because that's where mosquitoes like to breed. Pollution from landfills, um, removal of vegetation, as well as air pollution. How do wetlands help us? Well, as I said earlier, it protects our water quality. It also controls flooding. It serves as a home for many plants and animals. And the economy also has a significant connection to wetlands. Saving our wetlands means saving lives. Take a look at these beautiful animals and how we need to save them, as well as our plant life. How are wetlands conserved and why is it so important? And what can you do to make a difference? Grade six. Number one. Join a program that helps protect and restore wetlands. So contact your local municipality in your area, your community groups, your environmental organizations, or a non-government organization about activities in your area. And in South Africa, we are so lucky. There are so many involved people who want to get involved, who want to help and make a difference. So just inquire around your local community. Report illegal activities. So any activity such as filling, clearing or dumping in wetlands reported to government authorities. So give the local police a phone call. Pick up all litter and dispose in appropriate trash containers. Keep surfaces that wash into storm drains clean of pet feces. So when walking your dogs, pick up your dog mess please i cannot i cannot ask you for more than that it's so irritating when you go walking your dogs and there's uh, people who just don't bother to pick up their their pet feces toxic chemicals fertilizers and motor oil which eventually wash into our wetlands polluting them Plant local tree species, so plant only local species of trees, shrubs and flowers to keep the ecological balance of local wetlands. Use living shoreline techniques to stabilize the soil. So if you make use of waterfront property with a shoreline or a riverbank, use living shoreline techniques to stabilize the soil. So you put in a mix of plant roots, sand and stone instead of man-made structures. Avoid wetlands if you are expanding your home or installing something like a shed. If you live close to one, be very careful with the materials that you use. Use phosphate-free laundry and dishwasher detergents. Oh, big discussion amongst many people. 
okay um, phosphates help the algae grow in the in the rivers and the lakes and it suffocates the aquatic life so it takes the oxygen because the algae takes oxygen out of the water and then the aquatic life have no oxygen so they cannot survive the plants and the animals um, so try and use phosphate free laundry and dishwasher um, detergents so the next time you're shopping with your mom maybe say hey mom is that phosphate free use paper and recycled products made from unbleached paper so in other words a bleached paper contains toxic chemicals that can can contaminate water so try and use paper and recycled products that are rather made from paper that has not been bleached use non-toxic products for household cleaning so in other words, if you are going to clean your house or anything to do with your lawn or garden, spraying um, insects, using insecticides, make sure they are non-toxic. Because remember, when it rains, all those toxins go back into the drains and flow back into our rivers and streams. So never spray lawn or garden chemicals on windy or rainy days as it will wash back into our waterways and back into our oceans very important and if you're not already doing it please start grade sixes reduce reuse and recycle household items and waste i cannot stress it enough and we don't do enough in south africa we're not involved enough get involved at home get involved at school um, make sure that you help your mom separate um, the household items make it easier for her if you are passionate enough you can make a difference so get involved at home and get involved at school and i would like to end with this last little slide saving wetlands is saving lives so look after your environment if you live near a wetland and you're lucky enough to go for walks around there enjoy it enjoy the peace enjoy the tran tranquility enjoy the biodiversity thank you for listening grade sixes i hope you've enjoyed this lesson today's homework is a little research project so i've asked you to go and do a research um, on your own wetland of choice so choose a south african one or a global wetland i do not mind and i've asked you to um, do a one page um article um with and i've asked you to answer some questions obviously there won't be a memo posted grade sixes and that is because it's your own work but it's very good to do your own research and find out interesting information on your own without being spoon fed all the time so enjoy it i hope you um, have a great day i hope you enjoy earth day take five minutes go outside and just contemplate how lucky and blessed we are to live in such a beautiful country.